District of Columbia suing MicroStrategy founder Michael Saylor for tax fraud. The Attorney's General Office is also suing the business software company for allegedly helping him evade taxes on his earnings uh, in the district. The District of Columbia is suing MicroStrategy founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor for allegedly never paying any income taxes in the district in more than 10 years he has lived there. Attorney General Carl A. Racine announced in a tweet on Wednesday. In addition, Racine tweeted that his office is suing MicroStrategy for conspiring to help him evade taxes. He legally owes on hundreds of millions of dollars he's earned while living in Washington. In a follow-up tweet, Racine also wrote that the action is the first lawsuit brought under the district's recently amended False Claims Act encouraging whistleblowers to report residents who evade our tax laws by misrepresenting their residents. Yeah, so this is basically we're getting into a society where our government encourages people to tattletale on each other like we're some sort of toddlers and then get everybody in trouble. This is just ridiculous, man. MicroStrategy shares were down more than 4% following Racine's tweets. According to a copy of the complaint shared with Coindesk, Saylor lived in a penthouse in, Wednesday, uh, in Washington while masquerading as a resident of Florida or Virginia by purchasing property and registering to vote in these states. However, he still lived in the district for at least 183 days per year, which is the minimum to be a statutory resident. The district attorney general's office also alleged that Saylor had micro strategy rep uh, report his residency as being in Florida in forms filed with the USIRS or International Revenue Service. Uh, concerned about MicroStrategy's involvement in defendant Saylor's fraudulent scheme to avoid district taxes in or about 2014, MicroStrategy's then chief financial officer undertook a count uh, of the number of days the defendant Saylor spent in Florida as compared to the district and found that because Saylor spent a majority of each year in the district, MicroStrategy could not justify misreporting Saylor's residency to federal tax official, the complaint said. Thanks for the follow, Brelick, and welcome to the Sons on Twitch. The Attorney General's office alleged Saylor avoided paying more than $25 million in taxes to the district and is seeking back taxes. Treble uh, damages civil penalties, expenses, and fees. Saylor is a Bitcoin maximalist who has uh, bet the business software company's future on Bitcoin, amassing billions of dollars of worth of cryptocurrency over the past few years. Saylor rec recently stepped down as CEO of the company to focus on MicroStrategy's Bitcoin plans. MicroStrategy did not immediately respond to a request for comment. This should be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, I didn't know that you would actually come out on Twitter and have the attorney general go ahead and make these sorts of announcements right off the bat. That's kind of odd. In addition to that, you know, the, the basic principle or the basic thing that they're going to have to argue here is how long did Michael Saylor live in, you know, D.C. compared to another district and how does that affect it? And of course, once that is determined, they'll figure out how they want to do it. But, you know, I mean, there are, there is the question of basically, are we getting to the point in cryptocurrency where they're going to start setting up examples? You know, to a certain extent, you know, John uh, McAfee was an example. And I do think that there will be more examples set. Who better to try to set an example with than Michael Saylor? and obviously target him because he is a big proponent of Bitcoin. Is that what's going on or am I overthinking it at this point? This is a little wild, uh, kind of out of nowhere. You know, we are going to see people set up as, you know, examples for um, tax evasion or tax fraud or not paying taxes uh, because, you know, that is the point in society that we've gotten to where, I mean, frankly, it's no, it's, it's not dissimilar to what happened in the Roman empire. When you end up having a class of people that control everything that have no specific skills to actually help the society run. And so they overburden 
the people that have the skills uh, with taxes and then eventually they overburden them to the point to where those people just quit working. That's what happened when pretty much, you know, all the farmers during that period quit and then essentially the Roman Empire started and began to fall. There are arguments of when that actually took place and so on, specific dates and, and whatnot, but that is kind of the trend that ends up happening. And I don't see that dissimilar to what from what's happening in the United States currently. I would say by and large, a majority of politicians don't actually have any uh, marketable skills. So, you know, their goal is going to be keeping their pockets lined by burdening the public. And I think that's pretty much what we're seeing here, especially with the 87,000 IRS agents hired and all that sort of thing. Now, the way that they make that work is they can't really go ahead and audit every single person. Uh, that's kind of hard with the amount of people. So what do they do? They set up a few examples and this is kind of what's going to happen over, over, over time, I think. Um, and, and yeah.